Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm talking about how to detox from a female covert narcissist or anyone with a cluster B personality disorder, which includes narcissistic, histrionic, borderline, or antisocial. In this video, I'm talking specifically about intimate romantic relationships. My intention is not to clump all cluster B personality disorders together. And although there is some overlap, there they are all distinct disorders. However, the recovery process from a relationship with someone who falls into one of these categories, whether it's BPD, NPD, etc., is virtually the same. Because what they have in common is that they hijack the normal human bonding and attachment system by using your basic survival needs and human impulses to intensify and solidify your connection to them and your investment in them to the point of creating in you an addiction to them. I'm Lisa Blanc. I've been a therapist for almost 25 years and a life coach for over a decade. If you like this video, please take a moment to click the like button and subscribe to my channel and click on that notification bell so you don't miss anything. This information is for educational purposes only, so if you need support with your specific situation, please reach out to a mental health professional in your area. Okay, so let's dive right in. The first stage of the detox process after the last breakup is disbelief. Right after the breakup, you might feel relief for a few days because you're finally getting a break from all of the drama. And part of you may not really believe it's the last breakup, especially if you've had repeated breakups before, which is especially common with BPD. But when you realize she's not coming back or taking you back and that this is the last breakup, the feeling of relief turns to disbelief because you don't understand what happened. How did something that started out so amazingly end so badly? Mentally, you feel confused, disoriented, your thoughts are racing, and you just can't get her out of your head. And emotionally, you feel blindsided, abandoned, betrayed, rejected, anxious, depressed even. Physically, you feel drained, exhausted, unproductive, and unmotivated. And you just keep asking why, why, why? And you feel like you're going crazy because you can't understand and you just want to call or text her and get answers or, or fix this because this is the worst you've ever felt in your life. There's an emptiness that you feel can only be filled by her. Like an addict craving your drug, you're in withdrawal. And part of you just wants to, you know, call her up, beg for forgiveness, promise to do better, be better. But you've been through this cycle so many times before that a big part of you knows that there's nothing that you can say or do that will work. So if she's broke up with you and has already moved on, you may feel panicked and desperate to fix things and get back with her. You might be reaching out to friends, family, anyone who will listen and knows her um, to get that advice and help because you need answers. You want her back. And just like an addict, you are seeking your drug. Stage number two is the replaying stage. So You've realized she's not coming back and you're trying to push her out of your mind, but you feel terrible. You're crawling em emotionally and mentally. You can't make decisions. You can't eat. You just feel like crap. That anxiety, that fear, that sadness, the hopelessness, the feelings of grief and depression are overwhelming. And it feels like things are getting worse as time goes on instead of getting better. So you try to focus on all the bad things that she did, all the hurt, all the disrespect. And the only time you feel good is when you're mulching over all this negative stuff. But then you see something that reminds you of something super sweet that she did for you, a magical moment that you shared, an intense sexual experience, and that feeling of aliveness you had when you were with her comes back. And so you go back and forth replaying the past. And again, you want to do nothing more than reach out and fix this. And if you can't fix it, at least get some kind of closure. And that's one of the realities that can be the hardest to accept is that you will get zero closure, no matter how much you need it, 
or beg for it. So you're stuck in this repetitive loop of replaying the relationship and everything that happened over and over, thinking of all the ups and downs and banging your head against a brick wall trying to figure out how this happened. Why did this happen? Then comes stage three, self-doubt. As you replay the scenarios over and over, you question what you could have done differently. And you genuinely wonder if you were to blame and this self-doubt intensifies because you need some kind of understanding about what happened. You ask people around you. Um, you're looking for reassurance, validation, but you quickly realize that they don't get what you've just been through. And often they'll just tell you what you want to hear. It wasn't your fault. She's crazy. That kind of stuff. Maybe you have a friend here and there that might tell you that, you know, you should go back and try again. Clearly, having no idea how toxic and destructive your relationship was or what a person with a severe untreated personality disorder is capable of. But still, you keep analyzing your part. How did this go wrong? What did I do? There must be something I could have done differently. And this self-doubt spins in your mind all day long for a while. You barely get your work done. You're not taking care of yourself. You're self-isolating because you're so caught up in this loop of guilt, regret, and doubt that just keeps playing like a broken record in your mind. And you get to a point where you're just disengaged with the outside world and living only in your head. Next comes stage four, which is anger and blame. And you may have been angry all along, but you get really angry here. You now know you're not getting back together. Um, maybe that's because you have enough insight and self-respect to know that you'd just be going back into the same destructive relationship cycle or because your ex has moved on with someone else and is flaunting how they are so much happier without you. They're on social media, acting like you never even existed. But here you are, grieving, hurt, and that's when it turns to real anger. And you get really angry because you've done so much for her only to be beaten down and discarded and have them look like they're better off without you. Like their new supply is just so much better than you ever were. Proving that you were the problem. The truth is, they probably got over you before even leaving you, and it's almost certain that they got attached to someone else before your relationship even ended. So, don't look for signs that they miss you, that they're still thinking of you, or that they're sorry, because any sign that they do give you is just going to keep you hanging on emotionally and make you feel sorry for, you know, losing the best thing that's ever happened to you. It's a trap. It's very sick and it will just lead to more anger and blame. Stage number five is the research. So if you haven't already started research by now, you're feeling so bad. No one has your answers. Things continue to get worse and you still need answers. So you start researching and whoa, you're blown away by what you find. Finally, some answers for what's happened to you. And it doesn't take your pain away, but it does give you some relief that you are not the problem, that there was nothing you could have said or done to change this outcome. But your emotions are still over the, all over the place. So you're going from anger, or blaming, to longing, uh, crying, anxiety, reminiscing about the good times, the bad times. And it's just, you have this insatiable need to dissect every little detail and to understand this at a deeper level. So your whole world starts revolving around your research and you just watch YouTube videos on and on and on. And so I would recommend you not only going no contact with your partner if possible, or if kids are involved, 100% gray rocking them. I also recommend stop researching because the research becomes the addiction and it prevents you from rebuilding your sense of self, um, from moving through your healing process. And in, in a twisted way, it's an indirect way to stay addicted and in touch in some way with your toxic ex. So once you have the confirmations and understandings that you need, stop researching, you know, toxic partners, BPD, NPD, because it just keeps you stuck on your ex. It keeps you from moving forward. It 
keeps you rehashing the same old stories and it'll drive you insane and it will likely put you into a victim state of mind and that state of helplessness and powerlessness is not a good place to be. So this research phase is important, but if you've been obsessively researching for more, you have what you need and you don't need to be reminded every day. There are no more answers for you online and there are no more answers for you, period. So stop talking about her, researching, mulching over things and start managing your mind away from thoughts of her. Stage six is the acceptance stage. And as you step away from all of the replaying and researching, your mood starts slowly to stabilize and you start feeling stronger mentally. You notice that you're not thinking about her as much anymore. You feel like you have, you know, more understanding and acceptance about your experience and you don't feel so vulnerable emotionally. At this point, you do feel stronger, but you still feel like a shell of the person you used to be. Maybe you look in the mirror and see glimpses of the self you used to be. And you might go back to things you used to be passionate about, but they just don't hold the same, you know, appeal. Uh, you start going out, you get a new haircut, you buy new clothes, maybe even start dating. And if you're lucky, your ex doesn't come around. But as you pick yourself up and get stronger, there is a good chance, especially if it's with a narcissist, that they will start hoovering. Because at this point, their new supply is probably drying up. They might text you out of the blue with just a, hey, I was thinking about you, dreamt about you last night or whatever. And soon they'll be telling you how they realize after being with someone else, how amazing you are. This happens because now that you've sufficiently rebuilt yourself and are strong again, they see you as fresh supply. So hopefully you're deep enough into your acceptance and level of understanding to realize that if you do go back, you'll quickly see the pattern start up again. And not only will you eventually be discarded again, but your healing process will be much more difficult and complex after being double duped by the same person using the exact same tactics. So assuming you stay no contact and don't fall prey again, you can start moving to the next stage, which is the healing stage. And the healing stage is really the start of a new normal. So, you know, you're solid in your commitment to never ever go back to this type of toxic relationship and you're feeling better mentally, emotionally, physically, um, you know, getting back to the, the things and the people that you, you know, used to hang out with and enjoy spending time with, but you're still feeling this emptiness, this void. And in some ways you've lost trust, not only in women, but in people, because this experience is so far outside of your paradigm of how the world works that you just can't seem to put your trust in anyone even yourself. So maybe, you know, part of you knows there's still good people out of the world, in the world and that you're a good person, but you're extra cautious and you don't want to be fooled again. Maybe you, you know, you start dating again, but you can't seem to find that special someone and you start perceiving everything as a red flag. Or maybe she just doesn't do it for you like your PD partner did because you're not getting that addictive feeling, those highs um, that are just so high that anything else is boring. So you feel hopeless and you feel like you may never feel true joy again. And so at this point, you usually start realizing that you're ready for the next step of your healing, which is committing to getting back to who you really are, what you really want to need, what made you vulnerable to this type of person, as well as what you need to let go of in order to move forward from the experience, to figure out how to use it as a catalyst for your own personal growth and empowerment, rather than staying stuck in a black hole, a dark place that haunts you for the rest of your life. 
If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. And to learn more about personality disorders, check out some of my other videos in my NPD and BPD playlists.